which I am today, um, I'll perform an experiment about the water and its properties. So the objective of this experiment is to understand the uses of water as a solvent and as a medium for biochemical reactions. So we need the following materials. We need the citric acid powder, and then the sugar, the margarine, the gelatin powder, the sodium chloride or the table salt, the ethanol, the baking soda or the sodium bicarbonate, and the water, and of course, the acetone. So water as a universal solvent. We'll start with putting about 0.5 grams of the following substances like sodium chloride, the sugar, the gelatin powder, the margarine, and the ethanol. And then the sodium bicarbonate and citric acid powder will be set aside for a minute. So now we need to add 1 milliliter of water to each plastic cup that contains the substance. And then we need to shake it vigorously so that the substance can be dissolved. So it's the mixture of ethanol and water and as we can see it, it formed homogeneous mixture. And then the next one is the margarine with water. So as we can early see that the margarine um, could it be dissolved with 1 milliliter of water and it remained solid and intact. And then the next one is the water with sodium chloride. Okay, shake, 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 and shake. And then there we can see that most of the particles of the sodium chloride um, got dissolved in 1 milliliter of water. So we're gonna shake it a little bit more. And then there we couldn't um, identify the particles of the sodium chloride therefore it got dissolved in the water and then the next one is the sugar with water so let's shake it again and again okay uh, it's the same with the sodium chloride with water it got dissolved also in with one milliliter of water. The next one is the gelatin powder with the water. And then shake it also. Then there, um, we can see that it needs to add, uh, we need to add one milliliter of water again. So, yeah, let's try harder with the margarine and water. We already added one milliliter of water. But the margarine still uh, remained intact. So the next one is the gelatin powder. So our water became cloud. And I can see that there are still some particles. So we need to add one milliliter of water again. Okay, and then shake, shake, shake both of the margarine with water and the uh, gelatin powder with water. Okay, but it still did not fully dissolve in 3 milliliters of water. So now let's proceed and repeat the process, but this time we need to use the acetone instead of water. So each plastic cup contains the same substance a while ago. And then let's put 1 milliliter of acetone to each plastic cup. And then, let's shake it again vigorously for the substance to be dissolved. And then let's see if this sodium chloride will be dissolved in 1 milliliter of acetone. Okay, shake, shake, shake again, again, and again. So, as we can see, there are still some particles unlike with the water. 
So next one is the sugar. Okay, shake. Then there are still some particles. So sugar did not dissolve. So let's see with the ethanol and the water. So I think it is. It also formed a homogeneous mixture. So let's proceed with the gelatin powder. But again, it also did not dissolve, and as well as the margarine, so it also remained um, intact and solid. The same with the water. So let's put another one: to the sodium chloride, sugar, gelatin powder, and margarine. So let's shake it, and then let's. You can see it, it still not did not dissolve. The same with the sugar. Let's see with the gelatin powder. So it also did not dissolve and then obviously on the marketing. So let's try it again one last time and put another one milliliter of acetone. It still did not dissolve, and while I was doing this, um, the plastic cup becomes colder because of the acid on. It felt cold. Okay. So let's proceed to the second part of our experiment, which is the water as a good medium for biochemical reactions. So this time, we need to mix about 0.1 gram of dipaldehyde citric acid and sodium bicarbonate in a dry plastic cup and observe if a chemical reaction appears. So, let's mix it together. Okay, oh, let's mix it together. And then see if there is chemical reaction up here. But as we can obviously see, there's nothing happening when we mix the sodium bicarbonate and then the citric acid out. Okay, so now let's try it and add 10 milliliters of water and see if there will be a chemical reaction this time. Then we can visibly see those bubbles that were formed during the um, pouring of water. So there, there was a chemical reaction between the water, sodium bicarbonate, and the citric acid. Okay, I think we're done and we witness the chemical reactions that occurred. Thank you. After performing the experiment, we will now proceed to the summarization of data of solubility of substances in water and acetone. The five substances are the sodium chloride, sugar, gelatin, margarine, and ethanol. We have observed from the experiment that the sodium chloride is soluble in water but insoluble in acetone. The sugar is also soluble in water but insoluble in acetone. The gelatin is soluble in water but insoluble in acetone. However, the margarine is both insoluble in water and insoluble in acetone. While the ethanol is both soluble in water and soluble in acetone. The ethanol is also miscible in the water and acetone, which means that it can mix freely in both water and acetone. What happens when citric acid and sodium bicarbonate combine? 
So the two compounds react quickly and change chemically upon the addition of water resulting to the production of carbon dioxide gas which gave rise to the bubbles and other components such as sodium ions, citric acid ions, and water. To elaborate, when water comes into touch with citric acid, hydrogen ions are released which react with baking soda to make carbon dioxide gas which then combines throughout the water to produce foam and bubbles. Number 1. Enumerate the different functions of water in living systems. It regulates body temperature. It lessens burden on the kidneys and liver by flushing out waste products. It is the medium for most biochemical reactions. It helps dissolve minerals and nutrients to make them accessible to the body. It drives the folding of amino acid. It helps to convert food into energy. It fills the cell, helping them to maintain its shape and structure. And it's dispersion medium for colloidal cells. Water is an excellent medium for chemical reactions for it can store a large amount of heat, is electrically neutral, and has a pH of 7.0, which means it's neither acidic nor basic. Water is also used in many enzymatic activities as a bond-breaking agent or as a bond-forming agent when it is removed from a molecule. Its versatility and adaptability allows water to perform significant chemical reactions that living organisms utilize to maintain equilibrium and thrive to daily. With a human body's diverse needs, water serves as an instrument to sustain balance on the system, considering its capability to become neither acidic nor basic by giving up and receiving hydrogen molecules. Through chemical bonds, water has the ability to give up hydrogen molecules, thus acting as a base and receive hydrogen, thus acting as an acidic component. Hence, the adaptability possessed by water molecules enables it to combat drastic alterations of pH level in the body to build protection for proteins and other vital molecules within the cell. For our guide question number 3, the properties of water solutions. The properties of water solutions are there is a solvent and solute present wherein the solvent will automatically be the water and the solute is anything that can be dissolved in or by water. Another one is there is a hydrophilic and hydrophobic effect. The hydrophilic is the compound that easily dissolves with water and the hydrophobic effect usually happens when the water molecules are surrounded by nonpolar substances. Next is the water solutions have a characteristic called adhesion, meaning there is an attraction of water molecules to other molecules. It also has its density, which is the mass per unit volume of a substance and has a specific heat capacity. Another property is the boiling point of water solutions is 99.98 degrees Celsius or 317.13 Kelvin while the freezing point is 0 degrees Celsius. Next is water molecules also undergo hydrogen bonding, wherein the positive charge of one water molecule is attracted to the negative charge of other water molecules. Thus, bonds are formed between hydrogen and oxygen atoms of adjacent water molecules. And lastly, meanwhile, there is also a characteristic called capillary action which is described as the ability of liquid to flow against gravity in narrow space. In this illustration, water serves as solvent. 1 milliliter of water were added to 0.5 grams of sodium chloride, sugar, and ethanol, and one with additional 2 milliliters of water were added to 0.5 grams of gelatin and margarine. As a result, sodium chloride and sugar dissolve at 1 milliliter of water, while gelatin and margarine did not dissolve at 3 milliliters of water, and lastly, ethanol added with 1 milliliter of water just formed a homogeneous mixture. In this illustration, ethanol served as solvent. 
1 ml of ethanol were added to 0.5 grams of sodium chloride, sugar, and ethanol, and one with additional 2 ml of ethanol were added to 0.5 grams of gelatin and margarine. As a result, 0.5 grams of sodium chloride, sugar, gelatin, and margarine did not dissolve to either 1 ml or 3 ml of ethanol. On the other hand, ethanol added with 1 ml of ethanol just combined and formed a homogeneous mixture. In this illustration, it showed how biochemical reaction formed by mixing 10 ml of water, 0.1 grams of dry powdered citric acid, and 0.1 grams of sodium bicarbonate. In this chemical reaction, mixing powdered citric acid, sodium bicarbonate, and water resulted to formation of bubbles. For the generalization, it was fun doing the experiment. We have understood the uses of water as a universal solvent and as a medium for biochemical reactions. We have also discovered the unique properties of water in comparison with the acetone. The water can dissolve most of the particles of our different substances such as sodium chloride, sugar, gelatin powder, citric acid powder, and sodium bicarbonate. The water was also used for the biochemical reaction to occur between the sodium bicarbonate and citric acid powder. However, the acetone could not dissolve the mentioned substances because it does not have the same properties with water.